Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Well, good morning. It is Monday, February 12th. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. The flu continues to have a huge impact on Maryland residents. Health officials have said that two people have died of the flu in Glen Burnie, and more than 12,000 cases have been reported statewide, making it the worst flu season in three years. So far in Anne Arundel County, 115 people have been hospitalized for the flu. The intensity levels and geographic activity are considered high and widespread, and the numbers do continue to climb. To give you an idea of that, in the week ending January 20th, more than 2,600 cases were reported. A week later, that number climbed to 3,150, bringing the season total to more than 12,400 cases. If you're looking for some tips to avoid or deal with the flu, ionanapolis.net and search for Evolve. And Dr. Friedman from Evolve Medical Clinics has some great information for you there. Up in Baltimore, the entire Baltimore metro will be shut down for up to four weeks, the MTA has announced. MDOT MTA announced on Sunday that the Hogan administration is sending $2.2 million in emergency funding to run shuttle bus bridges to transport riders along the Metro Subway Link Route. Free shuttle buses will run starting at 5 a.m. this morning. A local bus bridge will stop at all stations and run weekdays from 5 a.m. to midnight and on weekends from 6 a.m. to midnight. Who knew Baltimore even had a subway system? They slid that one past me. Another one that slid past me was the mounting criticism of synthetic turf. Most of our athletic fields in the high school level are switching to a synthetic turf. Certainly college fields are as well. And in Maryland, there is a group of lawmakers that is introducing a bill that would prohibit the state from using any public money to build or renovate synthetic surfaces. Obviously, it would impact schools and parks, and especially those that receive any funding through Project Open Space. Now, Delegate Aruna Miller says that it's primarily health-related. The delegate says that the plastic blades of grass are often painted with lead paint and that thousands of tires that are shredded down into little pieces have unknown carcinogenic properties. She also claims that it is a bacterial breeding ground and she is concerned with turf burns sustained when someone's skin slides across the surface, ripping the skin off. I'm not quite sure how that differs from real turf. You slide on it, and you get gravel, and you get grass burns. It happens. Anne Arundel County has installed a new $2.2 million 911 dispatch system. The goal is to reduce response times and offer geolocation tracking of emergency service vehicles, which is a great thing because then dispatchers can actually route the closest vehicle, not necessarily the closest station, to the emergency. This all went into effect on January 30th. And the county dispatchers previously worked with a system that was more than two decades old. The Market House saga may be coming to a close tonight in the Annapolis City Council meeting. They are set to accept the new lease that has been hashed out. And some of the details on the new lease are that New Market LLC will receive a rent abatement, free rent, through the rest of this year. And then from January through June of 2019, they will only pay $4,000 a month, when it will increase to $8,000 a month beginning in July of 2019. They will have a five-year term, and it will be able to be renewed for five additional five-year terms. There is a 5% rent rent increase in each of those terms, and they also threw in there a city performance-based rent on 2% of gross revenue after $1.5 million, and apparently the city didn't learn anything with the last guy that was in the market house because this will never have $1.5 million. They will always come in at $1,499,999.98. They do have a kick-out clause in here as well, and they are going to be applying for a beer and wine license, and they do reserve the right to apply for different licenses as the lease progresses. However, if the Alcohol Beverage Commission does not award them the license, the lease is done back to square one. 
A fight is brewing over beer. Last year, there was a bill introduced in the legislature which passed. It was to lure Guinness to a new project in Baltimore. Guinness is here, and craft brewers cried foul. Comptroller Peter Franchoke also cried foul. He convened the task force to really rewrite the entire liquor law for the state of Maryland, found a sponsor for that, and had his bill submitted. Now, the guys that sponsored last year's bill are doing another bill that pretty much backtracks what they did last year, except for the Guinness part, and likely has the support of large retailers and distributors who are opposed to Franchot's bill. The sponsors say that their bill has a better chance of passing, yet Franchot's side is all up in arms. Both go to committee on the 23rd, sparks will fly, and I know that Liz Murphy from the Naptown Pint is all fired up over that, so you can go over to naptownpint.com and check out what she's doing there, and also listen to her Naptown Pintcast. It's a pretty good podcast that comes out as well. I know you've been waiting with bated breath for the 36th annual Annapolis Cup. Yes, the annual croquet match between the Naval Academy and St. John's is set for April 14th on the lawn of historic St. John's College, and online ticket sales will start on February 20th. It will sell out like it did last year. Tickets are $15 plus a service fee for people 13 and older. Children 12 and younger are free. You can visit sjc.edu slash croquet for that information. And if you're looking to do something tonight... Go to Maryland Hall at about 6.30. Ignite Annapolis number 3 is getting underway at 7 p.m. tonight. Listen to 15 people tell you stuff in 5-minute increments with 20 slides each. That's all I got for the news. It's a lot, but we've got George Young with DMV Weather coming up with your local weather forecast. Stick around. Podcasting is growing. And since we launched the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief in September 2017, we've seen an incredible response with more than 10,000 subscribers. We publish every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., and our subscribers are listening to the DNB in their homes, in their cars, in their offices, during their workouts, and virtually anywhere on demand. They are finding us wherever podcast or audio happens, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Echo, and Google Play. If you're interested in tapping into this growing market in an incredibly affordable way, why not consider sponsoring the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief? You can sponsor a single episode, a week, or a full month for a lot less than you might imagine. Intrigued? Shoot us an email. The email address is info at ionannapolis.net. Let's see if it makes sense for you. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey, everyone. This is George from DMV Weather with your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, February 12th. Temps will be way down from yesterday's 50s and 60s across the Annapolis area as colder air filters into the region from the north-northwest behind the cold front that brought solid rains of 2 to 4 plus inches across the region yesterday. Look for temps falling into the 30s by lunchtime with slightly breezy conditions, making it feel even chillier to the start of our week. Then we get another cold day Tuesday with temps near 40, which will be followed by a warm-up back into the 50s on Wednesday and even more 60s again on Thursday before we drop back down into the 50s Friday, then another drop-off into the 40s on Saturday. Oh, and all of that comes with more showers in the mix Wednesday through Friday. So grab your coat, umbrella, jacket, short sleeves, boots, sunglasses, windbreaker, and whatever else you can find to take on the roller coaster ride that will be this week's weather ahead. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Make it a great week out there, and remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. I'm Sean O'Neill, your local RBC Wealth Management Advisor. When you choose to work with me, you'll have access to a worldwide network of financial products and services only available from a leading global institution. RBC's international reputation for physical strength and stability, world-class capabilities, and corporate values is unique in the financial services industry. I also recognize the importance of reinvesting in the communities in which we live and work, and I'm committed to serving my clients by building long-term relationships based on trust, integrity, and confidence. I look forward to helping you with your wealth management needs. Call me, Sean O'Neill, today at 410-573-6723 for a complimentary consultation. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionannapolis.net, where you can find much more. 
be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.